Hammer Titan has been my go-to class for solo content for a long time, but after I found this build, that might have changed. There were two things that I love so dearly about Bonk Titan. Easy to access infinite restoration and strong ability that you can basically use infinitely. With this Solar Warlock build, you have access to increased healing with restoration times two and basically infinite abilities that deal massive damage. Plus, you have a well at your disposal for DPS phases, making them a breeze. At the beginning of Season of the Wish, Bungie decided to change how a bunch of exotics work, one of those being the Karnstein armlets. With this rework, melees give restoration times one and finishers will give you restoration times two, while both Will give you cure times three which is basically fully healing you with this season there was also a nerf to restoration and now restoration times one dropped to 35 hit points per second and restoration times two dropped to 50 hit points per second now more than ever you need to be able to get to restoration times two so that you can heal through basically anything with this build we'll be finishing targets to gain restoration times two and then using our abilities and weapons to keep up that immaculate healing since you can use a finisher to get it that means you can bring any grenade you want and you don't have to use a healing grenade. And Warlock has access to the highest damage grenades for solar. We pair this with basically instant melee regen and we start cooking, causing ignitions everywhere, wiping out the field while constantly healing. While some other solar Warlock builds might be more powerful, this one offers you stability and ease of use. And while this might be one of the hardest builds to die on, that won't stop you from killing yourself with stupid mistakes. Remember to leave a like if you found this video helpful, and if you like seeing build videos and other Destiny 2 helpful content, hit that subscribe button. With that being said, let's jump right on into it. As we mentioned, finishers give you restoration times too, so our ultimate goal is to finish a target before starting every encounter. However, that can be tricky at times, so if you need to, kill with your melee to gain restoration, and then finish a target when you have the chance to bump it up to restoration times too. And now that you have your healing, you want to keep it up, and we do so by killing with our solar weapons and abilities. With our aspects, fragments, and mods combined, Mind, we can consistently get back our melee by jumping or bunny hopping when killing and quickly get our grenade back by causing ignitions and picking up orbs. If you ever run into a situation where you need a bit of extra healing or you lose your restoration, feel free to pop your healing rift for on-demand healing. So let's dive into the build and break down how it works. First up for our super, we are taking Well of Radiance. This build excels in all forms of the game, both with a team and solo play. So having a well for damage phases and add dense rooms does come in handy, both solo and with a fire team. And for our class ability, I'm choosing Healing Rift. Healing Rift offers you stability. I find that when I'm trying to do harder content, I want to have Healing Rift. However, Phoenix Dive is also really strong. Since we can consume our grenade with Heat Rises, after doing so, our Phoenix Dive will now do added Scorch damage and give us restoration times too. Mostly, pick whichever one fits your play style. And for our Powered Melee, I'm choosing Incinerator Snap. I'm picking this melee for one main reason. It becomes a lot easier to cause an ignition with this melee. With this melee, it'll fire out five bolts, and each bolt will cause 20 Scorch at base, and is increased to 30 with Ember of Ashes. So we only need to to hit four of those bolts on a target that has no scorch, meaning if we get close to an enemy and use the melee towards its feet, we can pretty much guarantee an ignition every time. And ignitions will play into our build later, so we want to cause as many as possible. So remember when you are using this melee, try to use it at the feet of an enemy, so that it will cause nearly all of those bolts to hit the single target and cause an ignition. For a grenade, you have two options, fusion grenade and solar grenade. Since we will be taking touch of flame, both of these grenades are super powerful. I like fusion grenade since it deals high C single target damage while having a shorter cooldown. Though Solar Grenade can cause more ignitions since it does add Scorch over time, but mainly pick whichever one you want. Both are super powerful. All right, for our aspects, the first one we're taking is Heat Rises. And I love Icarus Dash, but honestly, it's just not practical. Heat Rises is give or take when it comes to consuming your grenade to get airborne effectiveness and the ability to shoot in the air. That's not even really what I want it for. What I'm mainly picking it for is how much melee energy you get back from it. If you kill just one enemy while in the air with a weapon or ability, you're getting 20% of your melee back at minimum. And that goes all the way up to 50% depending on the tier of target that you killed. So this means all you have to do is bunny hop while getting those kills, meaning you'll never actually have to fly around the air to gain this benefit. And later on, I'll talk about why it's so important to get our melee back so quickly. We're also going to pair that with Touch of Flame. If you're rocking the Fusion Grenade, Touch of Flame will now make it explode twice, and the second explosion is going to deal even more damage than the base grenade, making it the highest single target damage grenade for solar. If you're choosing Solar Grenade, it now will last two seconds longer, and it'll emit Magma Blobs that will deal extra damage. These are a bit random, and it's hard to say 
exactly how much damage this adds, because it honestly all depends on where the magma blobs go. It will probably come pretty close to potentially dealing more damage, depending on how the lava flows. If you're hitting all of your blobs, then yeah, you can probably put out a little bit more damage than the fusion grenade. And this does offer more AoE damage, but honestly, I like the consistency and stability of fusion for single target damage on bosses and wiping out a group of enemies. All right, moving on to our fragments. First up, Ember of Empyrean. This is going to now make it so solar weapon or ability final blows will extend our restoration and radiant. We will gain radiant from our seasonal artifact and we have easy ways to gain restoration from our melee or finisher. So being able to keep that restoration up is going to be massive as well as keeping our radiant extended. After that we are taking Ember of Blistering. This will now make it so the ignition kills will grant grenade energy with the amount depending on the tier of target that was killed. As I mentioned before our melee makes it super easy to cause an ignition. We do have other ways to cause them, but this is a guaranteed way. So we use our melee to get back our grenade energy by causing an ignition and then bunny hopping around killing everything to continuously get back our melee. Not to mention that if you happen to lose your restoration, your melee will also give you restoration times one. If you're going to be running with a team and don't mind switching out a fragment, Ember of Benevolence is super strong. Bring in a weapon with heal clip or pop a healing rift on a teammate to gain increased 400% ability regenerate for six seconds. I love this fragment, but it offers no help to solo play. So in solo play, I'm taking Ember of Blistering. After that, we are taking Ember of Ashes so that you'll apply more Scorch Tax from all sources. We are trying to create as many ignitions as possible, and this is going to make it that much easier to do so. And finally, we are taking Ember of Char, so that solar ignitions will spread 60 Scorch to targets damaged by the ignition. Since we have Ember of Ashes, this is bumped up to 60 from 40, and this will cause even more ignitions, leading to more grenade energy and more damage overall. Let's talk about ways to improve the build. First up, our stat mods. First up, we are going for Resilience and shooting for 100. The added 30% damage resistance is definitely huge for survivability. It's key and basically everything that you do in Destiny, so basically almost always shoot for 100 resilience and then go for your other stats. And after that, I do like to shoot for 100 discipline. We don't need recovery as much for this build since we basically always have restoration times too. Yes, this does mean your class ability will have a longer cooldown, but it's worth it for the quicker grenade cooldown, especially if you're using the solar grenade over the fusion grenade. I also like to shoot for at least 50 intellect. If you can get up to 70, then that's perfect. Well's super powerful, and we should be getting our super back pretty quickly, especially if we have it on a shorter cooldown, our mods will be giving us back more super energy. Strength isn't super useful since we get our melee back so quickly by jumping when we kill, and there's no need for mobility, so both of those can be as low as possible. All right, moving on to our armor mods. For our helmet, I'm gonna take two harmonic siphons so that rapidly killing enemies with solar weapons is going to create orbs. While we are going to use our abilities a decent amount, we are still going to be using our weapons, and creating these orbs are going to fuel back into our build, and when we take two of them, it's bumping up each orb from 2.5% all the way up to 3.25%, and we'd love to have our well back as quick as possible. After that, I'm also taking hands on, so that we're granted more super energy on melee kills. And with heat rises, we can get our powered melee back super quickly, so that we can use our powered melee more often than we use our grenade, which is why I'm taking hands on over over ashes to assets. But again, we want to have our well as quick as possible. So being able to create orbs to get back more super energy and get more super energy on melee kills is super helpful. All right, moving on to the arms. First up, I'm taking Heavy Handed. Powered Melee Final Blows will now create orbs. And since we can get our Powered Melee back so quickly, this is going to offer us another way to get back even more super energy, but more important, more ability energy for our other abilities from the leg mods that we're going to be talking about later. Pair this with Focusing Strike and Impact Induction so that Powered Melees will now grant class ability energy and grenade ability energy. And as I mentioned, we get our Powered Melee back so easily. So I like to use it to fuel our other abilities. And for our chest mods, we're going to be taking the classic three resistance mods. Usually I like to do one harmonic, and then the two other important elements, usually being arc and void. But you could switch one of these out for whatever the threat is if you are doing content that does have a threat. Match it to whatever the enemies you are facing, but you could just spread it out to get an extra 15% damage resistance from all of the main elements. All right, moving on to our legs. First up, I'm taking Innervation, and I'm also pairing it with Orbs of Restoration and Absolution, so that now when we pick up an orb, we're granted 10% Grenade Ability Energy, 10% Ability Energy for our Least Charged Ability, and then 5% to all of our abilities. Having your grenade back as quick as possible is super helpful, so this is a guaranteed 15% on every single orb that you picked up, and if your grenade was just used, it'll bump up to a solid 25% just for your grenade. In harder content, I would recommend dropping Absolution and or Orbs of Restoration for Soul Solar weapon surge mods. That way you can deal more damage with your weapons for DPS phases. But in easier content, it's super nice with being able to gain back so much ability energy and consistently throwing our grenades and our melee everywhere. Moving on to our mark, first up I'm 
taking Bomber. It's going to give us 12% grenade energy whenever we use our class ability. This is super helpful since it's just another way you can bump up your grenade energy. So if you are prepping to go into a boss fight and you don't have your grenade, you can quickly pop your rift and gain a 12% bonus to your grenade. After that, I am taking Font of Restoration. So that we're getting a plus 30 to recovery whenever you have armor charge. And this is mainly to get our class ability back quicker with the added benefit of healing a little bit faster. Pairing that with time dilation so that your decaying armor charge has a longer duration. You have longer uptime on your recovery and potentially weapon surge. All right, let's talk about the artifact. Since this is a solar build, we will be taking advantage of all of our solar artifact mods, being Kindling Trigger for extra Scorch, Flint Striker for extra Radiant, Torch for extra weapon damage, Part of the Flame for extra super damage, and this does count for Well, since you are the caster of Well, Revitalizing Blast for easy weaken on bosses with abilities, and Raise a Precision so that Solar Precision Final Blows will create Ignitions, which again will feed back into our build, granting us more grenade energy. So do try to hit those precision shots while you have Radiant active. All right, let's talk about the weapons. First up in our kinetic slot. I do like to take a heavy hitter and whatever's best for the activity you're doing. Succession and Premacy are both kinetic snipers that offer good damage, decreased reloading, meaning you can use your heavy weapon, switch over to this weapon to deal extra damage. Another fantastic option is going to be the scatter signal. And this does offer you the option to take more mods from your artifact, which will give you unraveling rounds when you pick up an orb, which is just going to lead to more overall damage. Scatter signal is great if you don't want to use a sniper or if you're going to have to deal with some enemies that are up close and personal. For our energy slot, we are taking a solar weapon. I do mainly like to use an exotic here, but if you want to use an exotic heavy, just pick a weapon that has incandescent. This will help trigger more ignitions and refund your grenade back quicker. Some great options are going to be Adhortive, Amit AR2, and the Callus Mini Tool. Callus Mini Tool is one of my favorites, but since it isn't long range, Adhortive is a great alternative since it can roll with Heal Clip. So if you are running in team play, Adhortive with Heal Clip is fantastic for Ember of Benevolence. For the exotics, Sunshot, Tommy's Matchbook, Polaris Lance and Skyburner's Oath are all fantastic since they'll help trigger more ignitions and cause more explosions, helping with ad clear and getting your grenade back even quicker. Tommy's Matchbook and Skyburner's Oath will also both add more Scorch stacks as you're shooting. So if you are running with Skyburner's Oath, make sure to hit fire so that you can build up that Scorch causing more ignitions. And for our heavy, again, we're taking another solar weapon. If you do want to put an exotic in this slot, Dragon's Breath is my number one pick since it'll not only create more fire sprites, giving you back more grenade energy, but also it deals fantastic damage, especially if you're solo playing an activity. Another great option for an exotic is the air apparent. It doesn't do that great with DPS phases, but it is a fantastic ad clearing option. If you don't have room for the exotic, Apex Predator is my number one overall pick. You can get a roll with either Reconstruction and Bipod or Reconstruction and Bait and Switch. Both are fantastic, but if you don't have Apex Predator, Cataclysmic or Briars for a linear are both great. An avalanche for a machine gun is another great option since it can get some fantastic rolls to help deal more damage in DPS faces while being super good at ad clear. Stability is king when it comes to Destiny 2. Some damage is always going to be better than no damage. And if you keep dying, you won't be dealing damage, which is why I love this build so much. It has the balance of easy access to high survivability and ways to use our abilities frequently to deal more damage with the added benefit of having a well for both you and your team for DPS phases. I'm thoroughly looking forward to solo flawlessing a few dungeons with this build. Let me know your thoughts of the build. What would you change or how would you improve it? If you like the video and want to see more content like this, smash the like button and subscribe. That's it for me. Peace out.